Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to the Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at setting up the iOS version of the Home Assistant Companion app. And this is a follow on from last week's video about setting up the Android Companion app and the eighth video in a Getting Started with Home Assistant in 2022 series. If you've missed any of the previous videos, you might wanna check those out first and there's plenty more to come. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also then get a notification when I release a new video and that's normally every week. While you're at it, you can check out my affiliate links that are in the video description down below to purchase just some of the gadgets that you may have seen in my previous videos and also help support the channel at the same time. Or you can support the channel by signing up to NordVPN using the affiliate link that's also in the video description. Or you can also support the channel directly by using my Buy Me A Coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So if you didn't watch the Android video last week, the whole idea of setting up the iOS companion app is pretty straightforward. It gives us access to our home assistant setup from our iPhone. Whether you're out and about or even just sitting on the couch, it's actually really quite handy to have full control of your home in your pocket. Like with the Android companion app, we're going to need to meet some prerequisites. You need to have already set up a Home Assistant server, whether that is on a Raspberry Pi, an old computer, or even inside a Docker container on your NAS, if that's what floats your boat. If you haven't set up a Home Assistant server yet, you should probably go back to the start of this series, and I'll link a video in the top right hand corner for setting up Home Assistant server. The second prerequisite is that you should probably have set up Home Assistant for remote access. While it's not completely necessary, if you haven't done that, you're only going to be able to connect to your home assistant while you are connected to the same home Wi-Fi. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of setting up the companion app because you're not gonna have access while you're out and about. If you haven't set up remote access yet, I will link to a video in the top right where uh, I go through two different ways to do it. One way costs $6.50 US per month and it helps to support the developers of Home Assistant and it makes it very, very easy. And the other way is free, but it does require a bit more setup on your home network. Lastly, and at least for this video, you're going to need an iPhone or other iOS device running at the very least iOS 10. This means that the oldest supported devices are the iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, the sixth generation iPod Touch. You'll also need to have an Apple ID to install apps from the App Store, but I'm assuming if you're this far in, you probably already meet that prerequisite. So with the prerequisites out of the way, I'm gonna head over to my iPhone and open up the App Store. And I'm gonna tap the search button in the bottom right corner and type in Home Assistant. And it's this first item here, so we'll tap that. And we see we've got Home Assistant, Open Source Home Automation there. Uh, and in my case, I've just got a cloud with a download icon because I've installed it before, but you might just see Get, uh, and you might need to tap Get and then authorize uh, the purchase. I'm just gonna cancel that one. I'll grab the Home Assistant and we'll download that from my iCloud account. Once that's installed, we can then just tap Open, and it's going to take us straight over to the Home Assistant iOS app. And much like the Android app, it says this app connects your home assistant server and allows integrating data about you and your phone. So I will tap continue on there. It's going to ask uh, for permission to find and connect to devices on the local network. I'm going to tap allow on that. And it's discovered two instances. It's discovered my HiveMind demo instance and my HiveMind production instance. And you might be able to see here, I've, I'll have to blur some of it out, but you'll see here that it's discovered on my production instance that it is my Nabu Casa, my Home Assistant cloud instance. Now in this case, I'm going to connect to my demo instance. So I'll tap the local IP, but that's gonna present a problem when we come back later. Uh, 
but for now I will sign in with my credentials and we'll log in and it's asking me for permission to create a notify service so I'll tap continue and allow and it's also asking for permission to send critical alerts which I'll also allow we'll talk about critical alerts in a later video it's asking for permissions to read the sensor for step counts distance moved and current activity so I'll continue that and tap OK and it's now asking for permission to the focus data to see whether or not we're in a focus mode. Uh, so there's, if you're not familiar with focus modes, that was new in iOS 15. Uh, you could uh, use focus modes, which were different types of do not disturb mode. I'll tap continue on that and we'll tap OK. And that's going to allow for those focus permissions. Again, like the companion app for uh, Android, we have access to all of our accessories here straight from our dashboard. So uh, I'll bring up the A camera and I can tap WLED bar and that's going to turn off and back on and off and back on. Again, uh, it's very, very similar to our uh, Android app. If we tap over on the left hand side, uh, we can go to settings and if I scroll down here, we can go to uh, companion app and this is where there's a couple of things a little bit different from the Android app. The first thing that really sticks out here in the iOS version is this add server button because we can in fact connect to multiple servers from the one app. So I can also then add in my production instance here which I will do now. So now that I've added my uh, production and my demo server in here, we can tap on the demo. And, I, and when I tap activate, that means when I go back to the dashboard, um, we're connected to the demo server or on the dashboard, apparently I can do a three finger swipe and swipe over to production and it's going to load my production data. The three finger swipe's a little bit challenging to do on uh, a phone, but um, so now, we are on my production instance. And if I three finger swipe across, uh, it goes back to our demo instance. So we can swipe in between them with a three finger swipe uh, from left to right, which is actually really cool. I didn't know about that until just now. So tapping on the hamburger stack in the top left hand corner and then going to settings, and back into companion app. So other than the multiple servers, we've then got general, uh, and this is just general settings, things like changing which app our links open up in, such as Chrome, Mozilla, or uh, the system default. Uh, we can uh, turn on or off confirm, and we can also change the app icon uh, to a different color if we wanted to. Uh, for now, I'll just leave it on the release icon. Uh, and uh, then in location, We've got location permission is set to always, location accuracy is set to full. Uh, and if we tap on any of these, it takes us over to our settings app on the phone. Uh, and you can see you've got uh, location, whether or not you have uh, access and you can turn precise location on and off. Local network access, motion and uh, fitness permission, focus permission, uh, background app refresh and mobile data is allowed. I'm going to pop back into the app itself uh, and you see all of those uh, are pretty much mirrored in here. There's location history so you can tap on that and you can see the zones that you've entered and exited and we'll talk more about zones uh, in an upcoming video when we talk more about presence detection but the essential idea behind presence detection uh, is that we can create zones and you'll see I've got a test zone here and a hive mind demo zone here as well. So if we were to enter or exit those zones, uh, we would then get uh, that location history uh, show up in here. Update sources, so uh, we've got all of these turned on. We can change those if we wanted to. And then uh, as mentioned, you see we've got uh, the different zones that we've got to find. Back out to the main menu, I've got notifications. Uh, so inside notifications, we can see uh, we've got permission to send notifications to the device. And if we tap that, it's gonna take us over to the uh, iPhone settings. It's got sounds in here as well, so we can change the notification sounds. Uh, I won't do that. 
We can reset the badge to zero, which is really nice. I hate seeing badges on apps all the time, so that's really kind of helpful uh, and automatically is turned on so it will automatically reset the badge to zero every time we launch the app. Categories, it shows here that categories are no longer required for actionable notifications and they're going to be removed in a future release so I'm not going to worry about discussing that uh, but we will be looking at actionable notifications in a future video. So we've got the debug information here about rate limits and it's limited to 500 and you can see that that's going to reset in about 20 hours. You're allowed 500 push notifications for per 24 hours and rate limits are reset at midnight Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, there's a push ID key in there and there's also location notifications so we can turn on things like enter and exit zone notifications. There's also enter and exit zone via iBeacon notifications. Uh, iBeacons are basically a little Bluetooth low energy uh, item that just broadcasts an ID uh, and that iBeacon can then be used for like high reliability location information. Uh, but uh, we might have to take a look at iBeacons in a, another video again. Uh, there's also significant location change notifications, background fetch notifications, pushed location request notifications, URL scheme location notifications, and X callback URL location notifications. I like to turn on enter and exit zone notifications for debugging so that I know when Home Assistant thinks that I have entered or exited a zone and I can then uh, fine tune uh, those zones if I need to. Uh, that's about all for notifications. Uh, there's some actions in here and we can create actions that are used on the Apple Watch app. Uh, there's sensors as well, so like with the Android app, you can see that we have different sensors in here and we've got periodic update and when enabled these sensors will update with this frequency while the app is open in the foreground uh, and you can change the frequency between off or one hour uh, and down to as much as 20 seconds. The more frequently those sensors update, uh, the more your battery will drain while you're using the app. Uh, so we can also see the sensors that we've got here uh, and what their values are. And these sensors, if I go over to my Home Assistant demo instance here, we'll go to settings and then devices and services. So if we scroll down here, we've got iPhone. I'll go to one device and you'll see we've got the iPhone here. It's uh, got the details of the iPhone. Uh, and the firmware version, I'm running pre-release beta of iOS 16. And we should see that the details of our sensors are mostly mirrored here. It's not showing all of the sensors on the dashboard here, um, but we should be able to use any of these sensors inside Home Assistant automations as either triggers or as conditions. So for example, uh, I could have a condition that uh, my phone be connected to the force Wi-Fi for a, an automation to run. So it would require me to be connected to my home Wi-Fi. There's also some stuff like geocoded location, like the Android phone. It will try to figure out the address of where you are based on your geolocation. And there's a, a Google API that does that. Uh, so we can back out of the sensors there. Uh, and we've got Apple Watch, so uh, we won't worry too much about the Apple Watch. When we add the Home Assistant app to our iPhone, we can also add it to our Apple Watch, and then we can have different complications to show various things in our Home Assistant instance, such as a sensor value or something along those lines. Uh, NFC tags is something also that I didn't notice in the Android app, possibly because the simulator didn't have uh, NFC ability, uh, but you can both read and write an NFC tag using the iOS app that will show up in Home Assistant and you can set automations based on the NFC tags. And I've got a separate video about NFC tag. In the help menu, it just takes us over to the companion Home Assistant website. Uh, Back over here, we privacy, we see Firebase cloud messaging uh, needs to be enabled for the push notifications of function. Uh, and we also need uh, alerts to allow checking for important alerts like security vulnerabilities. And there's debugging information here like uh, location history and an event log. Uh, you can uh, export the log files or you can reset the app completely. So I'll head back over to uh, devices and services and I'll just go back to the device here. You'll note here that the battery level uh, and battery state is currently showing as charging, 
uh, but if I unplugged my iPhone from the charger and uh, that took probably about two or three seconds, it now shows not charging. So the frequency with which it updates is actually pretty reasonable. Uh, I've plugged that back in and you'll see that it is now charging again. So that's the iOS companion app. As you can see, it doesn't quite have as many sensors as the Android app does, uh, but it still provides quite a lot of control and quite a lot of information about our iPhone. And we can use any of those sensors as part of our automation workflows. Let me know what your thoughts are on the iOS companion app and your favorite feature. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea that you'd like to see me cover in a future video. Don't forget to also follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider changing that now by clicking the subscribe button. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release new videos, and that's normally every week. If you're looking for a VPN provider, there's an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. I chose to partner with NordVPN because they have the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I looked into. They have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the globe. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can help to protect your personal information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions that you make through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.